So if you're a contractor and you're sleepy all the time, or for that matter, if you do any kind of physical work that exhausts you and you find yourself always falling asleep, listen up. Because after years of experimentation and thousands and thousands of dollars spent in medical treatment, I think I've figured something out that is changing my life in terms of how sleepy I am and might be a benefit to you. So I have always been a mouth breather. And I didn't know that until I started editing these YouTube videos, watching myself work. And I realized that my dad wasn't kidding and he wasn't just being a dad when he would ask me, what are you trying to do, catch flies? Because when I'm working and moving around, I'm always breathing through my mouth, which is fine. Except I breathe through my mouth when I sleep too. So here's the upshot of that. About the time I turned 40, Kelly began to first tease me and then mutter and then vociferously complain about my snoring as it increased. Now, I'm not a really big guy, and usually sleep apnea plagues people who are more overweight than I am. Usually sleep apnea is obstructive. That is, you sleep on your back, your mouth falls open, the flesh in the back of your throat blocks off your airway, and you proceed to snore and then suffocate yourself. So it was something that I was dimly aware of, but not alarmed about until a particular annual physical. I sat down and talked to my doctor, and in the long list of things he asked me about, there came an opportunity to say, hey, I'm sleepy a lot of the time. Really? How sleepy are you? Do you take naps? Well, yes. Well, how many naps a week do you take? And I said, well, I take two or three a day, sometimes at street lights. Have you ever fallen asleep at a street light? It's embarrassing, right? So that triggered an alarm for him and he lectured me about the health considerations of sleep apnea that include increased blood pressure, an increased propensity for sugar diabetes, brain damage from sleeping and oxygen deprivation, and just a whole list of other things that made me profoundly nervous about my snoring. So to summarize this, after two $3,000 sleep studies, I was sent to a specialist. The guy was sharp. He looked over the one sleep study that was useful and he said, wow, you have both kinds of sleep apnea. I said, pardon me? He said, you have obstructive sleep apnea, which is where you are <coughs> plugging off your airway, and you have central sleep apnea, which means you're having a brain cramp. Your brain stops sending the command to breathe for a while until your, your carbon dioxide gets so high that your body begins to suffocate and says, okay, do something different, and you wake up enough to breathe if you're not closing off your airway, and then you continue to sleep. And he said I was waking up, waking up, coming out of REM sleep into a lighter sleep about 32 times an hour. Let me repeat that, about 32 times an hour. He said I had the most disrupted sleep pattern he had ever seen. Now, the thing that pertains to this is REM sleep is what you've got to have. And so the reason I hadn't been remembering any dreams for years, except the night terrors, was because I was not in REM sleep enough to dream. That's bad. So he prescribed a BiPAP machine. My insurance company didn't want to do BiPAP to begin with because it was more expensive. And so they gave me a CPAP machine. So this is not the CPAP. This is the BiPAP that we finally ended up with. This is a torture device. If they would have had this in the Middle Ages, the Inquisitions would have been a lot shorter periods of time. Let me just tell you that um, the machines are sophisticated. They're smart. But the problem was my doctor had to turn the pressure up to max as much pressure as the machines would generate in order to therapeutically treat both of my kinds of uh, sleep apnea. So yes, I could sleep when I could sleep, but I couldn't sleep that much because the pressure was blowing the masks off of my face. And when I would pull the masks down tight enough to hold the air in, it would put sores on my nose and marks on my head and my mouth, I would wake up and my mouth was even more parched than it used to be and it was miserable. And I struggled through with that during the period of time that we were building the spec house, and it about killed me. Until finally one day I realized, man, this is just not working. 
because this was also coupled with a period of time where I started some blood pressure medication. And uh, the blood pressure medication caused me to cough, lisinopril, I think, and so it was a perfect storm. And one night I was laying there thinking, I've got to do something different because it's killing me. And I was sleeping in a recliner and my wife was sleeping in the bedroom. And that's a condition I swore from my youth would never be part of my life. And yet here we were. So I got this brainstorm. I thought, what if I just tape my mouth shut? Good idea, right? So right then, about 2 a.m., I went out to the shop, and it wasn't this roll of tape, it was a roll of Gorilla Tape. And this is just good old-fashioned duct tape. And so I peeled off about that much, and in the middle of the night, I slapped it over my mouth. All right, and I went to sleep, kind of. It's scary to tape your mouth shut, forcing you to breathe through your nose. But I woke up in the morning feeling like I had done better, except I had to pull the tape off. Gorilla tape doesn't come off. So I pulled that off, nearly pulling my lips off in the process, and I was left with this rhyme of gray goo. And it was thick, and it was, it was a problem. And Kelly wasn't awake yet because I slept all the way till about 4.45, I think. So I went upstairs and I thought, How am I gonna, what am I gonna take this off with? And I thought, well, alcohol, will that do it? Surely fingernail polish remover is alcohol. And not knowing that fingernail polish remover is acetone, I poured it onto a piece of toilet paper and slapped it onto my face and about gassed myself. I didn't hit the floor, but it was miserable. So I continued to experiment with different kinds of duct tape and I would cut slits in them and I thought I was doing okay. And then one day, one wonderful day, I was talking to my friend, Dr. Brandon Bishop. He's a podiatrist here in Roseburg. He was on our podcast. He's a great guy. He is, um, he's dynamite. Anyhow, I was telling him about this and he was laughing at me. Good friends can laugh at us, right? And he said, hey, I have the tape you need. Now, kinesiology tape, it is, I wrote down here, an elastic therapeutic tape with an acrylic, it's a cotton strip with an acrylic adhesive. Secure tape, Griff Grip. Let me show you what I do every night. I cut off about, yay so much, three and a half inches. I don't quite cut it completely. I stretch it and I cut that tab. So there's a little bit there that I can get a hold of because it's late and I'm sleepy and I'm tired of messing with this. And then I fold it about one third. You didn't know this was a healthcare channel, did you? And then I take my scissors and I cut three little slits right in the middle, kind of where my mouth is going to be so I can get a little air back and forth so I don't freak out, all right? And then I peel it back to the fold. And I put the fold at the line of my lips with the cuts centered on my mouth. I adhere the top. And now this is a great part. I pull the bottom and stick it to my face. Now, In the morning it comes right off, but here's what happens. I'm able to get a little air transfer if I need it. I'm able to cough if I need it. And I am able to wake up with my mouth not dry and having slept. Now, <clears throat> here's what happened next. After about a week of doing that and realizing how well it was working, I thought, maybe I don't need this machine. So I was given an Apple Watch for Christmas. An Apple Watch will check your oxygen saturation. An Apple Watch monitors your heart rate. And by adding, where's my phone? A sleep watch app, which works great, I was able to begin to get some good data on what was going on while I was sleeping. It shows how much restful sleep and how much light sleep how many hours? Last night I got four hours and 50 minutes of restful sleep and about an hour and a half of light sleep. It shows I got a 26% dip in my heart rate. 
it shows that I have a 57 beat per minute average heart rate over the, over the night, and I can get a detailed graph of what my heart did. Now that's a little erratic. Often it's much more regular than that. And it tells me that my oxygen saturation was 96%. My doctor tells me that he can't use the data that's collected with an Apple Watch, and I get that. But I have enough faith in it to give some significance to the fact that every dynamic that is being measured is at or above what 50% of the population my age is experiencing. And that, my friends, is good enough for me. So I got rid of the darn machine. <clears throat> I've been thinking about running it through the power hammer. I hate it. I hate it. Now I know that some of you like your um, CPAP or BiPAP, it's because the pressure wasn't turned up so high for you and it works great, but I never got used to it. So here's the upshot. There may be another way to treat your sleep apnea and there may not be, and I'm not giving any medical advice. I'm just telling you that I feel rested. Instead of taking three naps a day, I'm taking three naps a week. I consider that to be a gain. And I'm dreaming again, and I can remember those dreams which gives me some confidence that I actually am getting some rest. And besides that, life is better when you can sleep. So I guess what I would uh, recommend is that everyone takes an active role in their own health care. Talk to your friends about all of your problems because you never know when somebody is going to know something that you don't know that is vitally important for you to know. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work.